on some talks and docats. You like that title, Matt? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, everybody, uh, as you can uh, no doubt ascertain by the title, uh, funny title as it was, if I do pat myself on the back, um, we are talking today about the Looney Tunes cartoons that were, um, by the way, it's not recolored as a lot of videos on Daily Motion I've noticed or this. It's not recolored. It's colored. Okay, these cartoons that you see down here, folks. In black and white they're not black and white because they were made in color and shot on black and white film they these are colorized not recolored there's no re there's no coloring again it's just a colorization especially the versions of these cartoons that we're gonna see at the top row here because they were redrawn and repainted um, but they were not recolored um, having re re colorized the monster, <laughs> <laughs> having re having ruined. Let's be fair. That's yeah. That yeah. is the uh, that is the take. Uh, if, if you're interested in, in in what Matt and and my take on this whole thing is, we're not fans at all of any of these colors, colorized versions. Whether they're this this top row here is the uh, repainted ones. The second row is the. Uh, is the is the computer colorized one so they are these prints but they've been given color and these the bottom row here is the black and white ones and it is certainly our opinion right matthew that uh, this bottom row is the only version there ever need be yeah yeah now i you know growing up watching them on nickelodeon i saw a lot of the computer colorized ones and I, I knew from reading books and everything that they had originally been black and white. And I saw the redrawns on like public domain tapes and stuff. And once I saw the original black and whites, I'm like, well, why watch it in color? That's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Because they're so much better in black and white because the artist intended them that way. Yeah. Um, it was, they used black and white because it was cheaper, but they knew how to work with it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and plus, it's not like they were only producing um, black and white at this time. You know, Looney Tunes, a lot of people, because Looney Tunes is the term that we call these cartoons now, a lot of people think that the Looney Tunes were the the, the prestige cartoons, and in actuality, they're not. They're the, the cheaper cartoons. They did make color cartoons um, in most cases, in, in, at least in the examples of when these cartoons that we're, we're showing today. Uh, were made they were making the merry melodies were color cartoons and they were specifically um you know for music you know songs that the warners had in their library yeah, yeah. um so you know it's not like it is it, it's, it, it's definitely not as though color was not around and they they were certainly capable of making colorized uh versions of the cartoons um yeah. so it's not what oh my god i'm looking at that that uh, hot pink jacket on yes. the redrawn there yeah oh. <laughs> oh. what were they thinking what well let's were... let's go into the history of them first of all yeah, and I'll, is... I'll kind of give you a little bit of an overview it basically late 60s in, um, yeah late 60... 60s actually i can tell you there's... exactly it was uh 67 was when um fred ladd began the uh the colorization um experiments and then in 68 yeah. is when he formed color systems incorporated okay color systems incorporated that's what we were trying to figure out but it was basically what happened in 1955 warner brothers sold their back catalog Sorry. to a tv uh distributor that was called sunset guild and they basically they had no idea that they were worth anything. They said, well, black and white cartoons, they can't release those again to theaters like they did the color cartoons, but they, there's a market for them on TV. Right. Because TV was brand new and it was black and white. So they sold them off, and through just serendipitous circumstances, Warner Brothers, about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years later, like you said, 67, I believe it was, reacquired them because... They had a merger with a company called Seven Arts that had bought out Sunset Guild. Yeah. So they ended up getting these black and white cartoons back, but by then TV was mostly color. And so they thought with this this whole Fred Ladd deal, and, and Fred Ladd, by the way, was, was known for Americanizing some of the earliest anime. Yeah. So he was he was responsible for giving us the U.S. version of Astro Boy, for uh, example. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
<laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, this the studio in South Korea is who did this, and they sent these these already kind of crappy prints over there, and they retraced every frame of animation except they didn't retrace every frame that's they the yeah, that, frame that's uh yeah that's a very good point of contention among uh, a lot of us die hard uh fans is that um i'll i'll, I'll use uh i'll use uh, notes to you as, as a good example here yeah um, yeah look what's going on with the cat here yeah you, you let's, definitely are skipping frames we're definitely skipping frames um you can see it here in porky's movements and um Right there, a very stuttered movement of him going <laughs> off, off uh, thing here. But uh, and and it's just it 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 affects the bottom line. It feels wrong, and it and when I say it affects the bottom line, it's like there are people for whom these were their first, you know, tastes of Looney Tunes cartoons, and why start on the. Why, why start with the bar low? These things are great. Why start with such a, a low, you know, it does kind of mess. Uh, I do think it does mess things up. I do. It does. You know. And the, the color choices are just so bad, too. It doesn't help that they used all those hot pinks and, like, yeah. horrible, garish. Like, look at this thing in Porky's Cafe up here. Like, that doesn't even look like a piece of toast. <laughs> it's like, it's supposed to be a piece of toast, but it looks like a pink turd or something. And his, his jacket and, you know, just every color is the... Hot pink coffee, baby. <laughs> every every color is the, the loudest, like, most, you know, and the point of it is really the, the context of the day for these really was, you know... These are black and white cartoons, but now they're color. So every, not only just color, but every color is going to be the brightest color it can be to, to really drive home the point. Look, now it's in color. But yeah. again, there's people <laughs> who are watching then. And even maybe to this day that for that, this is their, their first exposure to these cartoons. And it's like, no, it's gross. Yeah. Now compare that, that you just pulled up to the computer one from 1992, the middle one there. Mm-hmm. And at least you get the original animation, and the color choices make sense. They at least did those right because you get the original, you know, feel of it. Now yeah. they're still kind of they yeah, still well, look kind of off. I don't know if they make sense. Well, okay, you're about to say that they're off. There, yeah. it does, it does have a kind of. I don't know if this is an artistic choice. I don't want to credit artists here and and what i'm going to point out later from uh from from tom minton is that artists were not involved in this colorization but i will say that they're better <laughs> they're certainly better than the redraws yeah there and, is and what th their purpose they were co-funded by nickelodeon actually and part of the reason was that they had all these black and white cartoons and it was use the black and white which they thought kids would be bored by or use the redrawn which they thought kids would be horrified by uh yeah, <laughs> and they had the rightly technology so. they had the technology to do it digitally and so that's why they did that and i think it did kind of prolong the longevity of those cartoons at least so you got to give them credit for that uh cartoon network played them that way and I, I saw them mostly that way, and then when I finally started seeing these in black and white on, uh, you know, Cartoon Network had late night black and white. Yeah. And oh then, my god. And then they. Wow, dude, you just you, you just took took me back. I forgot all about that show. That was yeah. that was a great show. Yeah, Mid, late they, night black and white. Yeah, and they they started showing the, uh, the the original black and whites again, and some of them I'd never seen in black and white, and they blew my mind. Um, like, look at uh, Impatient Patient down there. Um, uh, up here. Up here. Up here? Down here. Down here. Down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, uh, I, it, it, it's, it's sad that we have to deal with uh, the, uh, the scan lines, but it, this is a gorgeous, a, a near gorgeous copy um, yeah. of the, the black and white, uh, which, yeah, I think you and I are among the, uh, the, the, the generation that, that, occasionally got to see this this version of it on uh nickelodeon uh Nick, yeah you know, but uh yeah before they stopped showing black and white and they they replaced it with the color ones uh but oh, yeah I, that one i have a story. that one 
I have a story actually. I'm, are you about to say something about this? Because I have a story. I yeah, tell. yeah. I was saying that it was it was one of a group of cartoons that Norm McCabe did during oh, the yeah. war, and he hated every one of them. From what I understand, he didn't like these cartoons that he did with Daffy Duck. So I'm I'm admitting this ruefully for the for the record. I'm not proud of this, but uh, I. Uh, when I was about six years old, my sister and I were big fans of the newspaper comic Family Circus. And we were six. We didn't know better. We didn't We didn't know he was a hack. We didn't know. Um, and uh, so one weekend, you know, we're away and uh, they uh, the parents give us, uh, you know, rent us one of their straight to video crappy movies. And because it, it's like it was direct for to video and they didn't have to like follow any kind of broadcast standards, it's at like a really weird time, like 37 and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so to like, you know, pad out the uh, the, the runtime, they added a few public domain cartoons on the end. And this one was was one of them. Uh, and I was in this form, I bet. Yeah. This is it. This is exactly the one. And I was so new to the world of Looney Tunes, like maybe a year and a half. I had I had started reading, you know, history books. I think I'd had uh, Steve Schneider's That's All Folks by this time. Yeah. But the fact that Daffy is brown and his yeah. his neck is pink and yeah. everything is so weird and obtuse and there's missing frames and the flow is weird. I yeah, didn't know. Awful. I didn't know. I thought this was some other character. I didn't think it was Daffy. Because what little information I had, I knew Mel Blanc had also done Woody Woodpecker. So yeah. I thought maybe he's just doing his his lispy voice for another duck. I was like, because no way is Daffy Duck brown and pink. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that what much. I knew that much at six. <laughs> yeah. So maybe. Oh. But yeah, um... The, the, you like notice the table disappears for that one frame there. You like you see the like it's a I guess a radio where he's got the plant on top of it and it just disappears. Like you're not supposed to notice. Mm. There's there's another one too that you don't have on here, but it was um, uh, somebody pointed it out on the cartoon research forum recently. But uh, Alibaba Bound, the the clampet one with the the camels and the the mm. Arab uh, fort, you know. Oh, okay, and. Porky Pig walks out of the bar. There's there's a joke in there somewhere, but there's a fly that gets stuck under one of the cells. <laughs> it's really bad. You know what? I saw that and I couldn't see the fly. Like I saw where they where they they say that and they they put a picture up. I didn't see the fly. I you know maybe I'm getting old, but I mean what yeah, I it, it, I it doesn't read old. like you know a a fly per se. But it's you, you see the shape of it, you see the outline of it, and you see what happened. It was a fly got stuck between the cell and the background. I mean, I completely, yeah, I believe it. I'm, I'm, I don't doubt for a second that it was there. But yeah, this is, um, this is uh, 67, 68, um, and uh, it, the the company that's making these, that is paying for all of these redraws, the ones up here at the top. Um, uh, is uh, is Color Systems Incorporated, and they lasted until seventy four. It, it, it was um, yeah. Know, See not up even top a, there. That, not even that a decade. Title card. They uh, that was the Guild Company, and they, they, whenever they sent these cartoons over there to be colorized, sometimes they would use the TV title because that's just what they grabbed. So they colorized that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to um, a couple people. Uh, that are in the know about this sort of thing. And um, some of this information I'm getting from Jerry Beck, so thank you, nod to Jerry. Um, I spoke to Tom Minton. You know what, before we get into Tom, I, now that we're doing um, uh, Porky Pig's Feet over here, uh, the the um, I'll come back to uh, Tom's quote, because that's actually solid. But what is not solid and a point of contention for anyone who is really paying attention um, to uh, Looney Tunes on YouTube, to say nothing of, of people like Matt and myself, um, there's, a, there's a guy named Eighth Man DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew says it all. Um, 
Eighth Man DVD. If if you like what he does, um, good for you. Good, good, <laughs> good for you. You obviously don't value quality. You obviously don't value aspect ratio <laughs> oh. because everything is, you know, stretched, stretched and, out to and uh, cropped out. And like, if you ever go and find his copy of uh, the Popeye, the Fleischer Popeye, um, Popeye meets Sinbad. Yeah, you look at that, and it's it's clearly ripped from the DVD, which is beautifully restored. But then he stretches, squashes, and crops it. Yeah, it's like why even bother? It's public domain anyway. Just put it up the way it's supposed to be. Well, and leave it alone. His he's called Eighth Man DVD because what started the company was uh, his restoration of the Orson Welles movie Eighth Man. Um, but uh, now this right here, this is the computer colorized version. Um, and here is what, uh, what he claims to have, um, made a restoration of, um, you know, his color. Why is it, why is it green? Well, because he may, (laughs) or, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm doing the, maybe, no, is that the, uh, well, because you got three different colors. That's weird. Yeah. And he, it, it definitely borrows from the, uh, the, the, this computerized one in theories because every color is like loud and neon, you know, cause like there's Porky yeah. and you know, similar loud neon colors. I mean, it's obviously faded because it's on TV, but yeah. Um, so did this guy go back and colorize it himself? It looks like he did. It looks like he did. And here's what's, what's upsetting about it is that, um, I made the mistake, as indeed anyone who has purchased from him anything did, of purchasing from him. And that is to say that I wanted to find that version that he had restored. As you can see here, folks, uh, I literally went to his site, tried to find this exact cartoon in the collections of cartoons that he sells on Amazon, and... Not only did I have to purchase three of them by mistake because they are not clearly labeled, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're all mismatched. So I had to just guess. I was like, oh, well, wait a minute. I wanted this one, but I got this one. So maybe if I purchase this one, I'll get that one. And by the third, you know, third Lux a char, you know, third goes a charm, I guess. It worked then. Um, I finally got to the compilation that included Porky Pig's feet. It was th- a blown out version of this black and white one down here. He doesn't even have his version available. Wow. Well, and I don't know why you'd want it. And look at that. Though. I wanted the, it the so spiral, I could. The I wanted, spiral staircase there. Yeah. Um, and I, we can, you know, use this audio too, but. If you look at just what a master Frank Tashlin was yeah. at using black and white, especially in this cartoon, and it's like any other version is inferior because look how many tones, look how many, you know, yeah. different shades of gray this and is, black and, you know. This is literally kind of, a man who, you know, a man, a director who knows that the cartoon is going to be in black and white. So that, yeah. so they paint it deliberately, you know, like this. The you know the it has the we have to be able to see that the the doorknob here is 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 in the foreground so this has to be a slightly darker shade and this has to be yeah but it's all you know where everything is everything it's still his brilliant staging and to colorize it really distracts from the action I mean it really does and so that's you see gonna, this and it's stunning I I saw this one for black and white for the first time i think on dvd this restored version yeah. and it blew me away because i was used to the one where he's the the cat has the purple jacket like the computer colorized one yeah and then oh look at that like you see the um the different shades here and just how flat and simple that background is but how well it reads yeah <laughs> so but, i'm gonna i'm gonna read my uh, speaking of reading i'm gonna read my my quote from um Mr. Minton, Mr. Tom, Mr. Mr. Minton, Mr. Yeah. Tom, Tom Minton. Um, he's, uh, and he, he also mentions that, um, oh, uh, sorry, Matt, I'm just going to mute you here because 
Um, I just looked at the uh, the the recording here, and uh, in order for these, in order for these to to really qualify as quickies, Looney Tunes critic quickies, they got to be kind of quick. So uh, I'm gonna cut us off here and uh, say that we'll we'll finish part two of this. We'll do part two of this discussion next week. I'll start with uh, the quote from Mr. Minton, Mr. Tom Tom Minton. And uh, what we'll also talk about is uh, we'll mention the specific executives by name that are respons- responsible for some of the biggest blunders in these redraws and uh, computer colorized versions. And also we'll talk about the appeal of black and white and also the negativity that a lot of black and white film, not just cartoons, uh, gets. So we'll be talking about all of that next week right here on the channel. So be sure to come back for that. And also be sure to check out Golden Age Matt's uh, uh, part of the big uh, operation, goldenagecartoons.com. Be sure to check that out because it's a really great, you know, you, you can have discussions, you can learn about stuff. It's not just Looney Tunes, Popeye, uh, Disney cartoons, um, um, you know, the whole thing, Tom and Jerry, Tex Avery, of course. Um, and you can learn a little bit too. It's a really great place. Uh, a lot of people in the know, a lot of people who work in animation uh, are a part of it, are a part of that group. So um, be sure to check it out. And uh, Matt and I will meet you here, back here, same time next week. <laughs>